Hi everyone, my name is Mark Moykins from Big Mountain Studio. What we're going to learn today is about how to store information right on the device so when the user comes back to your application you can restore their settings. So for example, if they open up this application they change some of these settings, they move this slider, and they close the application, well I want to save that information. So when they come back, I'm going to set everything back to the way it was when they left. And you do that using user defaults. It's a great way to store settings. It's very simple. Uh, you know, you're not storing it on the web. You're not storing it in core data or a database. It's just right on the device. So if that suits your needs, keep watching and I'll teach you how to do that. Okay, this is a fake application. It does nothing. But what I want to do is every time the user makes a change here, I want to be able to save that to my user defaults. So when they come back, I can restore these settings. And when I move this, you see it just changes the dollar amount, like how much your target of how much you want to save. And this icon on here, this little robot, I got this from the Noun Project. And I want to give credit to the person I got from because because I downloaded it for free. And if you download it for free, you need to get credit to uh, the person that created it. So this was created by Oksana Latisheva. Latish Latisheva? I don't know if I'm saying that right. But there's a lot of great icons in here. If you go to ro the robotic collection, there's a lot of cool cool robot icons in there. So go to the nounproject.com and you can look up this person's name and see their work. Okay, so let's get started. Now every time I make a change, you know, I want to be able to save that information. And we're using this object right here, user defaults.standard. So what I'm going to do here is we'll start with the slider first. When I change the slider, I just want to save it to the user defaults. So I'll say user defaults dot standard. And you know what? Because I use this in a few different places, I could create a variable for this to shorten up my typing. And for here, what we want to do is we want to uh, store a value, right? So I'm going to say set value. And as you see here, we're using currency. We're converting it to a currency. Uh, the amount, this value here from the sender. So what I'm going to do is actually use whatever this value is right here. It's a float. Okay, so let's store that float. I'm going to grab that value. And this is the value of the slider. And that's all we really need. We don't need to store a string representation of the, the text here. Okay, there's a float right here. So I'm going to paste that right in there. And everything needs a key because we need to be able to refer to it later. So for this, I'll just say, uh, what is this slider for? It was like target, target savings. So I'll just call it target savings. Okay, now that I save it, when I come back into this view, view did load, I want to be able to restore that. So I'm going to use the same uh, mechanism that I used here, basically just checking to see if there's anything in the user defaults. So I'll use an if let, and I'll say target savings. Whoa. Okay. And then I'm just going to use the same key. Now another handy thing to do too is you notice I use this string twice and it's the same value. So I could create a variable up here that just holds my keys and I'm going to do that. I'm just going to create a constant that says that's my you know, target savings. And I'm just going to copy this. There. This will also prevent, when I use a constant like this, it also prevents my making a mistake. So these are totally the same, and it's not going to compile if I mess up on these. But if I mess up on the strings, it'll still compile, but then give me an error later on. Okay, so now that I have my target savings, or if I have a target savings, that is, if this has a value, then what we want to do is we want to be able to put that back into the sender, or not the sender, <laughs> my slider. Oh, uh, you know what? I actually need an outlet for my slider. Let's add that. target slider. And here I'll just say target whoa target slider dot value equals my target savings. 
Okay. Now this this isn't going to work because because we haven't told it what now the value is looking for a float, but it doesn't know what this variable is. So if we just click on here, we can cast it as a float. There we go. Okay, let's test that out. See how that works. Okay, I come over here. I change that. Now let's let's see. Let's see if we can remember this. Now let's give a. There we go. Six thousand two hundred dollars. <laughs> I figured this would be easier to remember when I close it down. So let's shut this down. I'm just going to hit a uh, Command Shift H H. Then we'll start it up again. Okay, now you see this is in the right place. So the slider actually worked, but it didn't format it and set our label. So and not only are we going to uh, set the value, but we're going to call the slider changed. And we're going to pass in the target slider. Then what that'll do is it'll call this code, it'll format our number, and then put it in this label. Look at that. So it populated our label now and everything is working just great. So the next thing we're going to do is I'm going to play with this slider. <laughs> I want to change it just so you can see that it's going to update the value to a new value. So we need to be able to save these too. Because now if I click on these and I close it, then start it back up again. Well, this is fine, but these aren't these are not what I set it to. So I think you can see where this is going here. What we're going to do is we're going to create some outlets for fix my finances and fix my health. Fix finances, <laughs> fix finances switch. And then fix health switch. And we also want to be able to set the values once these change. So let's do that. Let's create some space here for some actions. All right. And I think you can guess what's going to happen here. We're just basically going to save these values right in user defaults. And you know what? I think I will create a variable for user defaults because I am doing a lot of typing, aren't I? So let me just copy that. And Let's go back to full screen. Let's call it defaults. There we go. Now I could just use defaults. Okay. Defaults. And here we want to, uh, we're changing the value of the switch, so we want to save the value. Or set it rather. Now here's a good place where we can store a boolean because uh, you know a switch is just it's on or off right so here we're just going to now I passed in the UI switch into the action so I could access the value right from the switch so I can just say sender dot is on now I need a string for, the, for this one too so let's create some some more constants for these strings I'm just going to copy, paste, paste, and we'll say this is uh, my fix finances, and I'm basically just going to call it the same thing, and then we have fix health. There we go. And then for this key, this is our fix finances. There we go. And it's going to be boolean again. It's basically it's just going to look it's going to look pretty much like the one above it. This will be fix health. Okay, so now every time I change those, it's going to save them. And then when I come back into the view, I want to be able to restore the def the settings. I'll just shorten this up, keep it a little bit different. Fix finances equals defaults value and we want fix finances you see how easy it becomes to use the constants and then it guarantees that you're not making a mistake and then we're going to we're going to reference the switch and set the switch 
switch dot is on equals fix finances. There we go. Now remember this variable comes back as an any variable, so you have to type it or cast it so you know which which type of variable it is, and it'll do it here automatically for you. And this is pretty much going to be the same thing. So I'm just going to copy this, put that in here, uh, and change some things around. Instead, call it fix health. Or <laughs> that's now I just need to create a variable here. So let's just call it fix fix h, and this will be fix health. And then this will just be fix h. All right, let's test that out. So basically, we'll, just to recap what we're doing here, every time they change the switches, we're going to save that value, the is on property, that's a Boolean, and we're going to save it into our user defaults using these keys. And then when the view loads, we're going to use those keys to get the values back out of user defaults and then assign them back to the is on property. Okay, so you see the 5,000 is still working. So let's turn both of these off and let's change this value. He's got lower expectations. He wants a lower monthly savings. All right, now let's quit the application and let's open it back up. Whoa, look at this. Okay, good. So the target monthly savings worked and the fix my finances worked, but the fix my health did not work. So let's try to debug that and find out what's happening. Okay, so we have our constant. It is different from everything else, fix health. And when we get the default, when we get the value from the defaults, uh, user settings, we're getting fixed health. We're putting it in this variable. And ah, here it is right here. So <laughs> that's a very good uh, example of why you normally don't copy and paste. It's because it errors just like this. So let's update this right here. And then let's try it. Yeah, those are simple copy and paste errors. And I've done them a lot in my past. So you think I would have learned my lesson by now. <laughs> All right, good. There it is. So you can see that it is it is restoring it to the correct value. So if we change this to 10,000 and we turn both of these on and we close the app and come back, it's restoring everything back to the way we had it. All right, great. Well, I hope this helped. You just learned something about user defaults and how you can use them to store the state of your application. You can store different control states like this. You'll notice on Facebook, if you start to type in a message, and then you close it down and open it back up again, it'll have your message still in there. That is just a good use of user defaults. All right, great. I hope this video helped with the project you're working on. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up and feel free to share this with any of your friends and consider subscribing. Thank you.